Greetings everyone, my name is Sari Chuma for Financial Inside Zambia and welcome to another episode of The Fifth Show. Joining me right now is Grace Soko from Money Acumen. Grace, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks Cedric, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. So I hope you tell us about what you do at Money Acumen. Sure. So we are a wealth management and investment advisory firm and we basically link our clients to some of the best investment options available on the local capital market as well as the offshore markets. So in your job, and you mentioned you manage portfolios, how do you strategize um, investment portfolios for your clients, especially in a high inflationary uh, environment? So the one thing that everybody needs to understand from the outset is there's no investment that's zero risk, yeah? You have to look at it in terms of what your risk appetite is and weigh them against your investment objectives. So what you can do in instances where there's high inflation is number one, diversify your investment portfolio. What we mean by diversifying is spread your asset allocation across different asset classes, different sectors, even geographically if you can. Another good thing is to have your investments in bonds or bonds that are basically indexed to inflation. Those bonds are literally created with the emphasis of outperforming inflation all the time. So in that case, it's one way of mitigating your risk. Another thing is, if you can, consider including real estate into your investment portfolios. Mm -hmm. So real estate is one of those um, investments where you can actually adjust it according to how inflation goes. This is where you'll find your landlord saying, we're raising our rentals in the next year. So that's one of the ways that you can kind of mitigate it a bit. Also, look into getting into equities. So equities, we mean your stocks and shares. Yeah, mm -hmm. because historically they've actually always outperformed insurance. And this is not just inflation, sorry. And this is not just on the Zambian context. This is globally. So if you look at also rebalancing your portfolio, always sit, do a little bit of an analysis and see, is my asset mix working for me? Is it something that I need to reconsider? And most importantly, always seek the advice of an investment advisor or a financial advisor just to help you navigate what's going on yeah oh, okay you mentioned inflation a lot there mm -hmm. and we are currently seeing uh, rising costs of living right so how do you advise your clients to actually structure their investments in light of these uh, challenges in mm -hmm. the current uh, economic uh, environment so again it comes down to you as an individual what are your investment objectives break your investment objectives into short term medium term and long term and that way even as you are planning on where to put your money you also have that idea in the back of your mind that I'm putting my money into this specific investment vehicle because I want to use it in let's say two or three years if you don't need it in the medium to short term then you're looking at other types of investments so always in the back of your mind yes look at your returns against your inflation but also make sure that you have concrete goals with timelines because time frames are also very important when you're choosing your investment vehicle. Hmm. And also in such an environment, some people would want to make money as fast as possible. That's true. Uh, so what work do you do to protect your clients from uh, get-rich-quick schemes or other fraudulent investment opportunities? So number one at Money Acumen, we always put the security of our clients' money as like paramount importance for us. So we do due diligence. Before we even suggest a solution to a client, we always go and do our research on the market. We have an in-house financial analyst whose job is just to go out and do the research. By the time we are recommending a solution to a client, best believe we've done our due diligence. Secondly, we're also very, very, very keen on passing on financial literacy to our clients. We want our clients to understand why we are going into this investment direction. So financial literacy is very important for all our clients and also just our team. We've got a very well-seasoned team of financial advisors. We're always scouting around, improving our knowledge base so that we can always give our clients the best advice that we can. Oh, and also I would give us a bit of insight into some of your uh, investment in securities over the course of, of your operation. So, like I mentioned earlier, we link our clients to some of the best investment options that we have. So, we dabble in quite a wide range of solutions, but as many acumen, our policy is to go for low to medium risk investments 
that steadily grow over the medium to long term. So just to revert back to your question about get rich quick schemes, a lot of the time when you have a short term goal in mind, the investment vehicle that you go for will be very difficult. And also remember, there is a relationship between risk and return. So generally speaking, the higher your risk, generally the higher the return, but it's not guaranteed. So we at Money Acumen focus more on low to medium risk just so that we can protect our clients' money and it will grow steadily over the medium to long term. Okay. Um, Just a follow-up question on that. How important is patience for someone who's actually investing? You've mentioned low to medium term and high risk is high return but not guaranteed. So Mm -hmm. how important is patience? I would say in the game of investments, time and compound interest is your best friend. So patience is ultimately most cardinal, especially when you're dealing in long-term planning. So things like planning for retirement. The more time that you have, the more your money can grow. When we look at things like planning for education, your education fee planning products, the earlier you start, the better for your child so that you give your money a chance to grow and compound. So patience is very important. But like I mentioned, separate your investment objectives. You need to have short-term objectives. Let's say you are saving up because you want to buy a house in two years. You need to have medium-term investments. Those objectives are more to do with your three to five-year planning. So let's say you want to go for master's in the next five years or so. That would be your medium-term planning. Then your long-term planning is things like, I want to retire in the next 15 years, or I want to build my dream house when I retire in the next 10 years. It's very important as you are planning, yes, patience is key, but always segment your investment objectives. And also, how do you adapt uh, the various investments that you've made over the course of uncertain economic conditions? Because perhaps the information that you get from research would indicate that this is a particular direction to go with the investment. And we know that the world is dynamic and sometimes things change. Yeah. So how do you adapt your portfolio towards those changes? So number one, which is very, very key, always diversify your portfolio. As we always say, don't put your eggs in one basket. So in an instance where we have so much economic instability, it's very important for you to spread your risk and also spread your investments across different asset classes. And most cardinally, always have an investment advisor or a financial advisor there by your side to help you navigate these challenges. And maybe follow up on that. Is there a one-size-fits-all for investment advice? Definitely not. Definitely not. What works for Peter may not work for Paul. (laughs) So it's very important. As you are coming up with your investment planning, like I mentioned, and I keep passing this on, always have a firm investment goal, a firm investment strategy, and always know that as an individual, goals change. For this year, maybe you were thinking, I'll buy my house in two years economic climate changes, we are now pushing it to five years. It means even the investments that you're putting your money into needs to adjust to fit the time frame. So I would say, as always, do your research before you put your money anywhere. What works for Peter may not work for Paul. Find out what it is that is going to help you reach your investment goals in the time frame that you've set for yourself. Okay, and you mentioned financial literacy. Um, What are some of the works that your firm is doing to promote financial literacy? And what is the importance of financial literacy to either your clients or prospective clients out there? So always knowledge is power. We always push and one of our missions is actually to have a well-informed client base, a well-informed country so we can make better investment decisions. We do have webinars that we host. We also actually have workshops that we do. So we've got corporate clients where we go in and speak to the employees because those are basically your salary earners. They have a regular income and it's easier for them to plan. So we do go into employee employers and have our corporate financial literacy trainings where we walk them through basic fundamentals like budgeting, financial planning, goal setting, debt management. We know that that is quite a difficult thing that a lot of people are dealing with. How do you save when you don't have enough money because of debt? So we work on that fundamentals of having good money habits and then we talk about what's available as you are saving because remember once you start your employment career with a good savings plan by the time you're done and you're reaching your retirement age you would have saved up quite a lot in your pocket so we do have corporate financial literacy trainings that we offer also 
we are very, 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 very serious about clients understanding the investment opportunities that we're presenting to them. When you present a solution to a client, our portfolio managers walk you through every single step so that you understand why are we putting our money in this investment vehicle? What is our goal? Because we want our clients to make informed decisions, yes? Then also, in terms of why it's important for clients to be literate, is also so that you just develop a society that is well educated on how to manage their money. And that way we can always feed back into the economy. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And uh, I would tell us a bit about the type of clients you actually focus on. Um, for example, you mentioned that you're going to employers and speak to some of the employees. Do you have solutions for the corporates as well, or for entrepreneurs, or for people who are professionals uh, developing a career in a particular field or sector? So what, what is the client base like for a particular firm? So we manage a very diverse portfolio of clients coming from all walks of life. We do have professionals, we have um, retirees as well, we're helping them to manage their funds. Even corporate advisory, we do that as well, so corporate and SME advisory, because of course as your business is growing, you need to have avenues where you can invest your excess funds. Yeah, We also deal with um, even a couple of school leavers. We do have some people who have just graduated and they want to get started on building their wealth creation. So we do cover that, but we've got quite a diverse range of clients in our portfolio. Okay, before we conclude, I'd like you to share one piece of advice for someone out there who's watching you and wants to get wealthy. What are the do's and the don'ts? Uh, maybe they've come across an opportunity that's telling them, oh, invest a one quarter today and in 10 days I'll give you one million <laughs> or anything like that. So what word of advice would you give to those people who are looking to build their wealth and maybe also speak into where they can find a money acumen? Okay, so money acumen is in Woodlands along Fair Road. We are near the SDA church, so if you know where that is, we are literally near the church. Um, in terms of do's and don'ts, start with what you have. I always advise my clients, don't wait for a lump sum. Start with what you have. Consistency always pays off in the end. And remember, that 15% or 10% that you're setting aside from your salary every single month or your income, whether it's from business or any other type of income, that is what is going to pay you in retirement. So look at it as a way of, I'm saving so that I can pay myself later in life. Don't look at it as a sacrifice. And also, before you put your money into any investment, do your research. Understand how long has this company been in existence? How are these returns coming? Can, does the money make sense? Does the math make sense? If you're telling me I give you one kwacha today and I get 10,000 kwacha tomorrow, how is that happening? Where are you taking the money? Things like that. And always, always, always have clear objectives segment your investment planning so that you know this is short term this is medium term and this is long term and you'll be well on your way to succeeding all right thank you so much for your time this has been a pleasure mm -hmm. and uh learn so much <laughs> great uh, this has been Serutuma for financial inside zambia get to know